Who here remembers what they wanted to be when they grew up at five years old? By show of hands. Okay, how about 10? 12? How about 15? All right. Well, I remember at five years old, I wanted to be an architect. I wanted to build and design buildings. At 10, I fell in love with the human mind, and I decided I wanted to be a psychologist. I wanted to understand why we responded <clears throat> to things the way that we did. At 12, I learned that psychiatrists made a little bit more money, <laughs> and so I became entertained by the idea of having someone sit on a couch and ask me for my advice. Somewhere between 12 and 15, I decided I wanted to be poor. Let me explain. I was born to two teenage parents who, with the help of immediate family, raised me, my younger brother, by a year and a half, and my younger sister, by six years, in Mount Vernon, New York. Here's a picture of us. I can assure you, my sister is going to kill me for sharing this image. <laughs> Growing up, there was a sense of pride associated with the family discipline and unity that we had established. Somewhere between 12 and 15, my parents separated, and my world was turned upside down. I began to question everything that I had learned about family and about relationships. I was thrusted into an administrative role in the household, where I helped my mom maintain the house. When I say that I wanted to be poor, what I really mean is that I wanted to survive. In fact, I didn't even realize that we were poor. I just knew what the standard operations of the day looked like. I remember coming home from school some days and ripping an eviction notice off the front door of our apartment and asking my mom, do we need to find a new place to stay? I remember walking over our rent to the property management in cash and being yelled at because they wanted a money order. I remember emptying a cart of groceries onto the conveyor belt at our local supermarket and having our food stamps card decline and walking away ashamed and embarrassed that I couldn't pay for the groceries. I remember washing by hand clothes the night before school in the bathroom sink with dish detergent because we couldn't afford to go to a laundromat or buy laundry detergent. I remember hanging those clothes up to dry on a shower rod, and sometimes the next morning, I would have to wear the damp clothes to school. I'm sharing these stories with you because these experiences are the foundation for my passion around financial education. A study by FINRA states that two-thirds or 66 percent of Americans show low levels of financial literacy. A survey by Charles Schwab also shows that most Americans believe on average they need $1.7 million in order to retire. With staggering low rates of financial literacy and the high price point for retirement, how do we bridge that gap? I believe we do so with the establishment of a team. Building a team provides long-term planning, accountability, and creates an environment where you can pay it forward. In 2010, my mom approached my siblings and I, and she gave us a choice. We could either leave Mount Vernon, New York, travel cross-country, and start a new life, or we could stay in New York with our father. My siblings decided that they would stay, and I, in spite of great fear and 
terrible just anxiety, decided that I would take the opportunity. I was terrified, as I mentioned. In 2011, we came back up north to Connecticut, where I started a career in financial services. Over the last 10 years, I've encountered the spectrum of people who demonstrate positive and negative financial best practices. I encountered people who would become friends within my peer group, who would accomplish things that I hadn't dreamed of accomplishing. Purchasing property, stellar credit. They had conversations regularly about 401k contributions and life insurance policies. I became consumed with the desire to learn and the desire to achieve. On my journey, I started down the path of entrepreneurship, where I encountered many financial professionals who would join my team and position me for success. People like CPAs, financial advisors, lenders, and real estate agents. Through my experience, I decided to create platforms to share what it is that I know, through writing, through talks like this one, through seminars. I grew up to a mantra, each one, teach one, each one, reach one. If you know, teach. If you don't know, learn. And that's exactly what I've done. Most recently, I helped co-found an organization that focuses on ending homelessness through education. One area in particular that we focus on is financial education. Today, I no longer want to be poor. In fact, at 29 years old, I stand before you owning my own property with a credit score well over 800 and paying it forward. Today, my call, call to action for you is to build a team. If you are in a position of knowledge, particularly around personal finance, have that conversation with your neighbor, your peers, your family. This is a conversation that should be had at every dinner table, in every classroom, over the course of every holiday. And lastly, I'll leave you with this proverb. I'm sure you guys have heard it before. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Together, we can close the financial literacy gap. In fact, through my accomplishments, I have had people across the span of several generations reach out to me, letting them know how inspired they are through the work that I do. I urge you all to build a team and to be a part of that team. Share what it is that you know, and if you don't know, learn. Thank you.